As humans, most of us want to help others and be perceived as kind and generous, right? Yet, how often do we help someone else for no personal gain? How often do we dedicate our time to solving a problem that doesn't affect us? The answer? Not often enough. The truth of the matter is that too often, we don't pay enough attention to the problems going around us and are too caught up in our personal lives. Instead of stepping up and deciding to take action to um, correct the problems going around us, we push it off and are too caught up in our personal lives. And we tell ourselves that we'll fix these problems later. The problem is that this later is never now. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this needs to change. We can't keep ignoring the problems in our world. Take a look at this cartoon, for example. Each person is too busy surrounding themselves with their own problems that they don't pay attention to the problems going around them. And instead, they're too caught up in their personal lives. And they don't notice the struggles going around them. Now, I'm not saying that you should ignore your own problems, but what I am saying is that there are people out there who need help, who need our help. And if just once we take a moment to look outside the box and observe the world around us, we could see this. And what's more is that we might find it within ourselves to help these people, to put up a little bit of time to volunteer to donate, or even do more. And in case you think that there's not much you can do to help these individuals, just remember that even a man who has nothing can give his time for a cause greater than himself. A couple years ago, I never would have imagined how giving some time to help someone else could transform my life and allow me to accomplish things that I had never dreamed of. It all started with an experience that I had with my grandfather in 2008. At the time, he was in the hospital for heart surgery, and when he was finally released, I was so grateful just to have him back. It was until a while later that I realized the huge role the doctors played in helping him and saving his life, and that inspired me. It was the doctors in India who had helped me in such a huge way, and I decided that from then on, I'd do my best to help others as well. In 2015, I was able to do that when I was playing at a park with my friends. I watched as a blind man was, who had a cane in his hand was going out for a walk. And I watched as he was walking and he walked straight into a low hanging tree branch and hit his head. He stopped for a moment, rubbing his head, and then continued walking as though it was a normal occurrence. And I remember thinking how awful that must be to be accustomed to receiving injuries. And when I went home and I did some research, and I was astonished by what I learned. There are not one million or two million, but over 285 million blind and visually impaired individuals around the world. And right now, these people use canes to travel. The problem with the cane is that it doesn't detect enough obstacles around them, leading them to receive severe injuries that require hospital visits. This also causes them to lose confidence in themselves and become afraid to venture out and have new experiences. And when I first learned about this, I remember feeling very angry. I mean, we live in a world full of technology. There are advancements being made each and every day. Yet these blind individuals have been using canes for centuries, and not one improvement has been made to the way they travel. So I decided that if no one else was going to do anything about it, I would at least try. 
But in all, in all honesty, I didn't expect much to come out of this venture. After all, I was only 12 at the time and had zero experience in what I wanted to do. But a science fair at our school gave me the motivation to put in more effort and to try a little harder. From my experience and research, I had identified the problem, but I still needed a solution. It was while talking with my brother, Krish, that he gave me the idea to use sensors. And after grilling him with questions, I decided to pursue that option. That year, I put hundreds of hours into doing research, creating designs, conducting experiments, and learning how to code. Throughout the science fair, I went through three different designs of the product before I finally settled on one. And I called it the Movement Aid for the Visually Impaired, better known as the Mavi. The Mavi was a three-piece wearable device that used sensors and computer vision to detect the obstacles around the blind individual. From the science fair, I received several awards, including grand prize and recognition from the Navy and Marine Corps. And I was really proud of the success that my product went through. After all, I went from not knowing a single thing at the beginning of the year to creating a prototype, all because I put in some more time and effort. It was from this experience that I learned with focus comes success and the ability to overcome obstacles. After the science fair, I started visiting blind communities. And the very first blind community I visited was the Dallas Lighthouse. And I remember at first not wanting to go. Why? Because I was afraid. I mean, I've been working on this product to help these people for over a year, but I was still afraid of interacting with them. I was afraid that my product wouldn't reach their level of expectation. Luckily, I had very supportive parents who convinced me that it was the best thing to do. And I'm really glad that I followed their advice because when I got there, it was as though I had entered into a whole nother environment. The people there were so kind and supportive. And I remember one man, over six feet tall, he put on the Mavi, put his cane down, moved to the center of the room, and started to dance. And I remember his explanation was, he had his hands free, he knew where everything was, and he wasn't afraid of getting injured. And watching his face light up with joy, watching the reaction of those around him, it was a really inspiring moment for me. And it was my interactions with the blind community that motivated me to finish the Mavi. And it's what motivated me to start my company, Sinotechnology LLC. Now, I learned a lot from these blind individuals whom I've worked with. They've gone through so much in their lives, and they haven't always had the proper resources to use. But even without their sight, they were still able to think outside the box, function, and do extraordinary things. And this is amazing. Now, before I continue, I want to ask you all to please take a moment and close your eyes. Now, imagine if this darkness, it was all that you could see, day after day. If this was indeed the case, would you still be able to go to work, travel, conduct your daily businesses? Sounds impossible, right? You may open your eyes now. What you just thought was impossible is something that millions of people live with and are doing every day. Their condition is not ideal, but they are surviving. Which makes us question, what is our limit? Ladies and gentlemen, right now I am 17. And I'll admit that I've had a few advantages over most of you that's allowed me to put in more time towards helping others. For the most part, I don't have to worry about food, shelter, money. <laughs> I don't have a nine to five job. I don't have to take care of kids or other adult things. 
And I've been blessed to have had mentors in my life who have helped me and guided me. Mentors who have opened doors for me and raised the bar. Unfortunately, I don't have time to thank each person who's helped me, but I am very grateful for them. So yes, I have had some advantages, but at the same time, I've had many disadvantages as well. I'm just a kid. I have less knowledge than experience than most of you here. I have my own required commitments in going to school and my extracurriculars. I have my own worries in keeping up my grades, knowing where I want to go to university and understanding what I want to do. Yet, despite all of this, I still find time to help others. Why? Because I enjoy it. I love working with the blind community, visiting them, interacting with them, knowing that I'm causing joy in their lives and knowing that I'm making an impact on someone else. You see, too often we are restricted by false limitations. We trap ourselves in an environment where we can't reach our full potential. But if we push past these limitations, overcome our obstacles, and step outside our world, we could accomplish great things. And I should know this because five years ago, I never would have imagined that I would own a company and be working on a product to help the blind. I share my story with you all because I want you to push past your limitations, overcome your obstacles, think outside your box, and make an impact. There are many problems in our world that need to be solved, so find what you are passionate about and make a difference. Make a difference not just for others, but also for yourselves. Because when you do something that you are passionate about, when you help someone or something, there's a feeling of pride and accomplishment that is unrivaled. Don't miss out on that feeling. And whatever you choose to do, don't shy away from it because of your obstacles or because you fear you can't do enough. Just do the most that you can. What you do doesn't have to be world-changing, but trust me, it will be life-changing. My ISM teacher, Mr. Pirtle, told our class a story about a young girl who was walking upon a beach upon which thousands of starfishes had been washed upon. Each time she encountered a starfish, she would bend down, pick it up, and throw it into the ocean. She had been doing this for some time when a man approached her and said, little girl, why are you doing this? There are thousands of starfishes here. You can't help them all. You can't even begin to make a difference. The girl seemed crushed for a moment, suddenly deflated, but then bent down, picked up another starfish, and hurled it as far as she could into the ocean. She then looked up at the man and replied, well, I made a difference to that one. The man thought about what she had done and said, and inspired, he joined her in throwing starfishes back into the ocean. Soon, others joined, and all the starfishes were saved. What this story goes to show is what you do doesn't have to be big. I spent five years trying to help the blind community. The young girl in the story made a huge impact on these starfishes. So just do the most that you can. And with the help of the community and the world, we can improve each situation little by little. The world we live in is not perfect. There are many problems and issues that need to be solved. But it is our duty to rise to the occasion, step up and correct these problems and amend these issues. I challenge each and every one of you here today to find what issues you are passionate about and take at least one step towards fixing it. Because as long as one person takes the first step, then soon others will join. And together, we will be able to accomplish great things. Thank you.